Horizontes was a 2017 Night Cities Challenge Map that aimed to connect two underrepresented communities in Wichita, Kansas, the predominantly Latino North End and historically African-American Northeast neighborhoods. We're here with Xavier Leja for, these, for this Horizontes conversation. Xavier Leja was one of the photographers um, that did the community portraiture during the Horizontes project. Xavier, hello, welcome. Hey, how's it going? Going pretty well. Xavier, what was it about this project and the call for photographers in the beginning that drew you in? I think the biggest thing that drew me in is was the concept in general. Um, growing up uh, on the North End, um, growing up in very mixed culture schools, uh, having a variety of different friends and different ethnicities, um, I thought it was a I thought it was an important project because I feel like up until recently there wasn't a lot of rep uh, representation for these communities and going back thinking about some of the interactions I had hearing some of the stories and how important these communities have been to this city and I'm sure I mean to every city that doesn't get talked about as much. So to be able to uh, be a part of something that put that kind of up there and in, out in the air and kind of in people's faces a little bit, it was uh, it was just nice. It was nice to see. Yeah. Will you talk about growing up in the North End? So you grew up in the North End, went to North High School then? Yeah, yeah. I actually was raised on a 19th and Park Place. Uh, we lived there for about 10 years and before we moved to uh, Midtown. So even just that small relocation was a, uh, the culture was extremely different from both neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Um, what in your background then led you to photography? How did you get into that originally? Uh, I grew up skateboarding, uh, so I mean, drawing, painting, I started out doing all that, and then, uh, I mean, photography, every now and then I'd get a little throwaway film camera and I'd go out and shoot some photos of some of my buddies and never really went anywhere. Um, I actually failed photography in high school, uh, so, and then it wasn't until later on in life, I think I was like maybe 20 years old. Um, a friend of mine was taking photos for a, another friend's clothing line and um, I've always been into it and I just asked him to show me how to like use a camera and everything and ever since then I've just kind of stuck with it it's been it's been my thing for the past shoot 10 12 years mm -hmm. does your photography generally revolve around humans is it no in portraiture not at all. Actually, portraiture is probably the absolute weak point of my photography. Um, when I started out, I mostly just did street photography. As a lot of people start out, you just kind of go around, take photos of whatever. Um, I got really big into uh, nightlife photography after a while. Um, I made some really good connections with some musician friends and DJs. And so that kind of segued me to event photography. Um, and I don't know, so just the uh, being in events and being in concert photography and stuff like that, I think the portrait side, I didn't realize I was getting more into until I started kind of revisiting some of my photos, which kind of led into, well, I want to learn how to do portraits a little bit more. Um, I kind of go into everything almost with the same mentality as I do with concerts and events. It's about trying to capture the moment. And in those types of settings, that moment is gone within seconds. So with this project, it was really, I think it, it felt good to me because I was able to understand that, that these are just moments that I'm trying to capture. So there was a lot of shooting from the hip. There wasn't a whole bunch of posing when it came to this project. It was really just about trying to capture what I could get in the moment. Absolutely. And so the portraits that you did, it's interesting that you say that it was your weak point because they turned out fantastic. Um, and you, you got a really intimate 
glimpse into people's lives, right? You got to go into their homes um, in ways that that other parts of the project just didn't um, get that intimate, I don't think. Not at least like in someone's home intimate. Um, will you talk a little bit about getting inside people's homes, inside their stories in that way and then capturing that moment? Every, both of the interactions that I had that were in someone's home, um, in somebody's office space where they work, um, in their neighborhood, these, it was, so I take a lot of that from shooting in those environments where it's, uh, you're more of a fly on the wall the entire time. Um, I always kind of went in and just try to have a casual conversation. It was, I think I actually spoke and had more of a conversation than I ever shot in any of those homes. Um, I didn't come out with a lot of photos at all. I, I would sit there for I think an hour, two hours, just con uh, just conversing with uh, each person. And, and then at, as the conversations kind of went, I would just kind of snag a quick photo you know, maybe they were just kind of taking a quick break or, you know, just in an interesting area of light in their home. And I didn't really pose them or ask for the photo. Um, we kind of just went with it. And, but being inside of somebody's house, that the most, one of the most intimate places you can possibly be. Um, it, it was interesting. Uh, I do a lot of urban exploring. And so we're kind of in places you don't typically go into or don't feel comfortable in. So it helped me that experience going into this because it was just kind of like I'm here um, and just kind of just rolled with it. Yeah, um, we do have two that we're that we want to look at. So let's look at this portrait first, right, which was community members in the neighborhood that they grew up in. Do you want to talk a little bit about this? photo and the, the stories from this day? Yeah, absolutely. So this one, I, I really love this one because they were, I, I didn't ask them for photos or anything really. Uh, this one, we were just kind of walking down the street. Um, we all we all congregated down the block at, at one of the uh, older uh, residents home and everyone was just kind of talking and we decided to just kind of take a walk. And for them, it was like walking down memory lane. I mean, those stories that they were telling about different homes and how their homes have changed over the years, uh, things they liked and didn't like about their current or their old homes. And <laughs> so it was just really interesting to hear that the stories about them playing on that street when, you know, they were younger, um, the smiles and, and some of the frowns of like just, walking down that down that history uh that they had there it was really interesting and it, it it you felt it when you were walking with them you felt that energy um of them just kind of projecting their emotions with each other uh it was a really good time they had a blast uh i mean there was a lot of laughs um i mean this is probably one of my favorite shots and just the group the group was just so much fun to, to photograph and to just be a part of. Would you tell us a little bit about your experience with her and her home? This was probably one of the most tense experiences that I had that, on this entire project. Um, she, after probably an hour and a half of just talking and trying to get to know each other, uh was finally a little bit more relaxed um i i'm not the type of person to go into somebody's home and just sit down and make myself comfortable it's just not how i am um i always wait to be invited in when i feel invited and made comfortable and that's when i can kind of get comfortable i think i stood up for 20 minutes to half an hour and was never invited to sit down. <laughs> um, so this this was probably one of the most important things for me, and it made me realize a lot of things. Um, I have a lot of friends from a lot of different demographics. Uh, a lot of my friends, partners now, um, are African American, uh, Nigerian. So growing up, uh, we always hung hung out at my house and everything. And growing up on the north side. 
even. Uh, I grew up around predominantly Hispanics uh, when I lived on Park Place. I mean, just gang members. So there was like a weird animosity between the two cultures just because of gangs. And growing up, um, I had black friends, I had white friends, I had Asian friends. So it didn't make sense to me. And I didn't understand that there was a feud between the two communities, which made me realize how important this project was. Um, so one of the conversations we had, she said, uh, she asked me, why'd they send you? And I was like, I just explained to her, well, my name is Xavier, I'm part of the uh, Horizontis project. Um, I'm one of the photographers for the project. So they, they're sending me around to different locations to get photographs and just to meet with some of the people in the community. And she responded, I understand that, but why did they send you? Why did they send a Mexican? And she, uh, <laughs> it took me back. She said, you know, we don't like each other. And for me, I, I didn't understand where it was coming from uh, because I work with all African-American, uh, Festive ICT, uh, that's Nana from uh, Festive ICT. That's one of my best friends. It's one of my partners. Um, I have tons of other people that I work with. So I was just like, I didn't understand where it came from. And she kind of explained to me that where it all came from within the communities and how uh, the black community was on the North end before Hispanics started moving in and which kind of pushed everything to that red line district that came on later on. So those people that were working at the factories were losing their jobs to the other community and it created animosity between the two. And she explained it in, de in, in depth to me and, and I, I never knew. I never knew these things were a part of a part of our community. I had no idea. I had no idea that this was a thing. And further on down the conversation, I had no, I had no idea what to do. I had no idea what to say. Um, I was kind of just in shock and I was just standing there in her living room. And I felt like I was just like overlooking her and just kind of thinking about it. And it just, it made sense that these communities didn't like each other or, you know, however it was, it was seen. And these two communities were both fighting for the same thing. It's like two siblings that just, they're so much alike or cousins or people that are just too much alike and they just never get along because they're both fighting for the same thing. They're both fighting for attention. They're both fighting for equality. And it wasn't until that part of the conversation that she kind of let up and invited me to sit down. And <laughs> that was, I, I, I get chills just thinking about that moment because it meant a lot to me to understand her point of view and to be able to find a, a common ground between us to where we could become friends through it. And so this photo in particular, after a few hours of like just talking, um, this happened to be one of her favorite spots in the house. And Everybody else was, you know, everyone's grown. She had lost her husband. Um, so that was one of her favorite places to sit. She liked to sit there and watch her plants. This is this this was her space in her home. This was where she loved to be. To be able to photograph somebody after hearing that conversation and be able to photograph their place of peace meant a lot to be able to be there and just experience that and hear somebody's story. It was amazing. This photo is like one of my favorites. You had mentioned before we started that, that that photo and that story in particular is one that has stuck with you and kind of comes back, recurs, you still tell that story. Um, what is it about that interaction that has just stuck with you so hard that just comes back and comes back and comes back? It was the, the feeling um, I, I felt I felt how she felt. Um, the way she described the the whole, the way she described everything really made me understand what this project was all about. It made me believe in this project even more so. Um, it helped me understand 
where I come from. Um, and it helped me understand where my friends come from and why certain situations happened growing up uh, between friendships, uh, you know, parents as a child, you know, why I got certain looks in certain communities when I felt like I did, like I felt like a part of it. Like I felt like I was supposed to be there. I didn't, I never knew what was going on. So that moment made everything real for me. And it is interesting, right, to move from that, that state of, of just simply not even knowing that that existed, then working through that, learning of that, and then working through that together with her, and then just, yeah, having an invitation to sit down. Okay, now you get it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that, is, that is what it's about. Um, and especially working with the elders in the way that you did as well, right? I mean, that generational knowledge that unless it's passed down, it's forgotten. So absolutely, how beautiful to have that experience with them um, because it is, I mean, it's it's a very different interaction that you're going to have with, with your friends your age. We're just not going to have those conversations. Yeah. Well, how did How did these portraits, how have they changed your your photography how have they impacted you in a in an artistic way they made me want to photograph they made me want to pursue portraiture yeah, actually i mean i felt the emotion behind every photo and that's actually the reason why i got this space um, because i wanted to focus on portraits and just that intimate interaction and even to this day when i do portraits i will i mean we converse for however long before we start actually working and the majority of the, the interaction is conversing You're just getting to know somebody um and then being able to take a photo of them I, I portraits are super vulnerable like you have to let yourself you have to let a lot a lot of your guard down um, as a, as a, as a subject and as a photographer, it's really important to capture that moment and to get somebody to that point to where their guard is down is a lot of work and it's, ex it's exhausting. Emotionally, it's exhausting. And there's a lot of emotion that is involved with that type of photography. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't just happen, right? I mean, all of that, all of that lead up has to happen for the photo that you want, but also in that, right? Like, I mean, there is the old adage that, that a picture is worth a thousand words, but to then have that story behind it just makes each portrait that much more meaningful. Absolutely. Um, so, these portraits ended up at the Kansas African American Museum in the exhibit at the end. What was it like to see your portraits up in that way and to see then, yeah, the people seeing these portraits and interacting with them in that way? When I went to the showing, I, uh, I went a little late. And I didn't talk to anybody that was a part of the project. Um, I didn't really want recognition for anything that I did because I didn't feel, I didn't feel like I deserved recognition for these photos. Um, they weren't, they weren't for me. They, they, these photographs weren't for me at all. You know, I, I took nothing away from the photos themselves. It was all experience for me. So showing up, you know, to this big, you know, this party in a sense and this big viewing and um, I hid in the back for most of the time. In fact, when they were inviting everybody who was a part of the project on the stage or in front of everybody, um, I tried to hide and they caught me and drug me up front. Uh, it was beautiful to see everyone's reaction to the photos. 
um, everybody who everybody who was on this project, all, everyone who did the portraits, everyone who did you know the murals, everybody. I feel like everybody left a lot of emotion into everything that we did. Uh, a lot of feeling was put into it, and it was it's an amazing project. It's it's an amazing experience to be a part of, and I think. I think that helps other people in the community feel like they're a part of the community. This part of the community is something that they can, like nobody can take away. Like this, these photographs are, they're archived there. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll live there for however long uh, that facility is up. And even beyond that, um, this project is something that nobody can take away. So um it was it was an amazing experience to see all the portraits up there, all the experiences, and to see people's interactions. For sure, it was it was intense. But like I said, it I didn't feel like it was it wasn't for me to take away anything. It was I I put everything into this uh, emotionally and let my guard down as well. But yeah, took nothing but experiences from it. Okay, I want to pivot a little bit and talk more just about being kind of a creative in Wichita. Um, I'm curious as a photographer, what opportunities have you encountered in Wichita? Uh, well, I, the opportunities here are whatever you make it. Uh, Wichita is a go-getter city. You have to go and get it. Like nothing's gonna come to you in Wichita. Uh, very, very few and far between are those opportunities going to just be handed to you or is anybody going to reach out to you unless you put in a lot of work to show what you can do here. Um, I lived in Kansas City for like eight months. I actually moved out there to see if photography was even something that I wanted to pursue. Now, I can tell you the difference between that community as far as like creatives at the time when I was there was still pretty fresh. And I mean, the first day I moved there, the very next day when I got up and just went and drove around the city, I was already invited to an art gallery to view it for a possible spot. I was booked for my first gig, literally in the first day. And it's funny because a couple months go on and then I started having people from Wichita contacting me for, from brands and different things to photograph for them and asking me if I was from Kansas City, which, which was really funny because I wasn't, I was, I was just there, I just lived there. And I had actually met some of these people. And so I just, I guess I didn't have a lasting impression at that time. I wasn't going and getting it. And that's the point here is it, it is very difficult as a creative, but the community is growing and the community now is like it was six years ago when I was in Kansas City. The community now in Wichita is a lot more inviting and it's a lot, there's a lot more camaraderie. Um, I shoot a lot of music. I shoot a lot of local bands. I shoot a lot of local just acts in general. Um, I play music now even. So just being around it a little bit more, I can see how it's blossoming. Um, Avenue Art Days, uh, all those different things that are going on right now are really uh, proving that the creative community here is thriving and it can do something. A lot of creatives want to get out of Wichita, but it's one of those places where you can stay and make money in other states as long as you're just putting your work out there. And there's such amazing artists in Wichita right now, and it's insane. And then with social media and all these different, you know, outlets, and it's really easy to be seen these days. So uh, this place is booming right now. It's crazy. Um, so you mentioned that you moved to Kansas City, you moved back. How did you encounter Wichita the second time around? How, how did that the, yeah. yeah, the second time around, I felt like I knew what I was doing. Um, I learned a lot about how to to interact, and I learned a lot about just it's hard to do things in your own city sometimes because you feel like everybody knows you. So if you do anything that's out of character, it's weird for them. 
So to go to a city where nobody knew me and I can truly just be who I was in that, in that time and space um, and just be a little bit more naive um, and kind of just let my guard down a little bit, it showed me a little bit more how to kind of market myself, um, how to, how to operate within the community, the creative community and out there in that short period of time I shot for, I did a big campaign for a, a coffee shop collaboration with a barber shop. Um, I had a residency at a local bar every Friday night. We had an event called Sounds of the World where a DJ friend that I actually met um, rooftoping, uh, he happened to be DJing a party and me and a couple of buddies went, he invited us to go crash it just to go photograph on the roof. And so that's where I met him. And we had like a five, four, five month uh, residency at a bar. So for that event, we literally had just like, we took a bunch of photographers uh, images from around the city and we started displaying them on all the TVs and on the projector above him as he was DJing. And his specialty was uh, world music. So it wasn't just like hip hop and everything. He had like African grooves and stuff from like South America and just all these different sounds. And it was, it was really cool to see, but we were just, we created a platform. We didn't realize we were creating a platform, but we created a platform for a lot of photographers out there at that time. And so when I came back, I understood what it meant to be a creative a little bit more. I understood what it meant to be a part of the community and to do things. I ran uh, IG Wichita uh, for a few years. And so that was a, a big thing too, is just like taking the selfishness out of being a creative and trying to put other people on display and show other people what it, just dis like just giving them a platform to to be seen. And now after a few years, I mean, I feel like, uh, IG Wichita kind of helped build a lot of other platforms that are 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 here now on uh, social media. Now a lot of people care about the, uh, especially the visual community. A lot of people care about it now. A lot of people care about what the photography community is doing. And these people are growing in numbers. They're growing in their businesses. Uh, they're getting more opportunities. And that's, I mean, it's cool to see. So that was just, that was what I kind of took away from that whole experience is that, is how, cause I had a lot of people put me on, like I didn't do it all myself. I met the right people, uh, befriended a lot of different creatives and different mediums and we just built together. Uh, I, I mean, it was, that's kind of what it's all about too. And it's hard to do it like photographer, photographer, you know, you can only do so much for each other. But when you start understanding that other creatives are out there, uh, skateboard companies, there was a, guy, a couple of guys that were making like long boards that I got into with, um, I mean, there's so many th different mediums out there to, to mess with and just capturing those moments for them is, it helps, it helps them, it helps you. So just finding what's advantageous for everybody in the art community is kind of what I learned from out there. So speaking to high school students who may be interested in moving from amateur photography into more professional photography, in Wichita now, do you have advice for up and coming photographers as they, as they get into this? Yeah, Sh shoot everything until you find where your niche is uh, and then go beyond that. Shoot all, like anything, everything. I took my camera with me to different events uh, I held it with me. I mean, there, I could, there's a time period where I could only shoot at night because of work and family. And I would be out until, you know, 12 o'clock at night, just taking photos on the street. Um, shoot your, take photos of your friends, anything, anything that's interesting to you. Um, your shoes, you know, if you got a friend that is a, you know, into fashion, you know, take them out and photograph them. Whatever it is that you're interested in, if you want to do photography, there's something else that you're interested in as well. And that's probably where I would start. You know, if you have friends that skateboard, photograph them, just shoot everything. Awesome, awesome. Okay, um, just a couple more to bring it now back to Horizontes, right? And, and the work that that did. Can you talk a little bit about how you feel Horizontes helped black and brown artists, creatives, develop 
themselves and, and bring new opportunities to develop themselves. Well, I think it built confidence. Uh, I think it showed that there's a platform for us um, to be heard in. There's there's so many different things that we could do. It for me, it built confidence in my relationships with the people that I I work with. Um, there was a lot to be learned from this project, and just as a creative, it just that's that's the biggest thing it it taught me was the confidence to understand who I was and where I stood in the community. And to be able to break those barriers on where other people may see that I I should be, so it kind of tore down a lot of those that stigma and those walls from ethnicity to just being a, a human being. And I'm as much as a part of this community as anybody else, and all of us are. So, as a creative, it's it's our it's our responsibility to document that and show it and make it more normal normalize it make it put it in everybody's face wonderful um to wrap up kind of the essential question what is on your horizon when you look out what do you see Xavier? right now a highway <laughs> um my uh right now i have a portrait project that i've been wanting to work on for the past six months that I haven't got a chance to get as in, involved in. And I think that's something that I want to stick with for out, throughout the, net, the rest of probably going into the summer of next year. Um, yeah, I have a pretty interesting project that I'm trying to do. Um, eventually, once everything, hopefully everything kind of cools down so I can put it on display but I'm trying to do an installation. Uh, that's the biggest focus right now, as far as my photography work. And that's why I have the studio. Uh, super lucky to have my partner as well, who's an amazing photographer here in Wichita. So uh, I lucked out by having him as a, a roommate here, but so we'll see what he can teach me. <laughs> but yeah, um, I just wanna show, I want to show the emotional side of portrait photography in, in a different way and also a little bit of a mixed media way. Well, Xavier Leja, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your stories. We appreciate your, your portraits. Thank you for all of that. Thank you. You guys are awesome.